So the information that you need to fill in the top of your sheets then, your case study that you're doing uh, is the Bangladesh floods between 1998 and 2004. The unit that we're looking at at the moment is obviously your GCC and it's the rivers topic. Um, the location, obviously Bangladesh, and we know uh, in terms of continents, thinking back to sort of earlier geography that you've done, that's in the continent of Asia. In terms of towns and cities and regions, it does kind of encompass the whole of Bangladesh. Um, particularly the sort of lower lying cities near the uh, near the sea as well. Um, country, obviously Bangladesh, um, and so that should sort of cover the top uh, part of your sheet. In terms of the information that you need about what actually caused the flooding, it's not enough to just say it rained a lot or heavy precipitation. You need to go a bit more detail in your answer. So you need to be talking about it being the monsoon season in Bangladesh and the fact that that's between July and September. You could also talk about the deforestation in Nepal. So they're chopping down lots and lots of trees, which is going to increase the amount of surface runoff because there's going to be less infiltration. So think back to the hydrological cycle for that. Um, also, there's been a great deal of urbanisation. Uh, Bangladesh is starting to develop slightly, okay? So lots of people are moving into cities, they're going to be building lots of houses, a lot more concrete, therefore more surface runoff. So all of these are going to act to reduce the lag time. It's always good to use some statistics in your answer to sort of back your information up with place specific detail. So one of the things that you could write down is um, the fact that Bangladesh actually receives three to five times the amount of rainfall that London does, and that's annually, but Bangladesh receives that in only five months, so obviously just during the monsoon season, okay, three to five times the amount that London receives. Um, and another thing you could say is that 80% of Bangladesh is actually on a floodplain and a delta. Okay, so right at the bottom of the river in its lower course and it's likely to flood. In terms of the effects of the flooding, now uh, there are some positive effects of flooding, not just the negatives. A small annual flood actually makes the land really fertile, so the reason why people actually live in Bangladesh, despite all this de destruction and devastation, is because it's really good for farming. Okay, Every year the uh, river bursts its banks and it leaves with it, it deposits um, quite a lot of material, some silt, and that contributes to the fertile land. However, it's not all benefits, as we've obviously looked at. Um, in 1998 there were a thousand deaths because of the floods, and there were 30 million people made homeless. Okay, 30 million is about half the size of the UK, so incredibly large numbers of people without a home. And then again in 2004, there were 800 deaths, so slightly less, but we're still talking massive numbers here. The responses to the floods are what people did as a result of it to kind of reduce some of the problems that Bangladesh was facing. Um, so the Bangladesh actually gave 400 tonnes of rice uh, to the people of Bangladesh who needed that. We've got roads obviously um, that trucks can't get through with food, shops aren't going to be open, there's going to be no way of people accessing food. So it had to be brought in by the government and that was for the 1998 flood. Um, in addition to that, we've got aid agencies who have to provide boats to rescue people. Boats are going to be the most um, easy way to rescue people rather than helicopters and it's a lot cheaper. Um, and then in addition to that, we've also got other countries which are going to give aid and they tended to give it in the form of money and also medicine as well because where we've got lots of high water, um, it's easier for disease to spread. Okay? There's not a lot of clean drinking water and there's lots of people kind of huddled together and it adds to the spread of disease. So medicine is really, really important. Um, in terms of the solutions as well, on a kind of wider scale, what we've got is um, one of the things they can do is increase education about what causes floods and what people need to do when they see the water level rising. 
Uh, in addition to that, you're going to need flood warning systems. It's probably a better thing, instead of for the people to give it out over the TV, to perhaps use radio, because we're talking about an LEDC country. People can't necessarily afford TVs, so radio might be a better way to get the information out. Um, there's also flood management strategies as well. You've got hard engineering, things like building dams, really quite expensive things. We can also do what we call soft engineering, which tends to be cheaper and more in keeping with the natural environment. So that's the things like um, the afforestation, which is planting trees. So to try and reduce the problems associated with deforestation. And then linking on from that, the flood management boxes that you've got in the bottom right hand corner. In terms of the short um, term flood management, they uh, actually built 5,000 flood shelters for people who'd been made homeless so that they could go and move in. Obviously, when you've got 30 million people made homeless, it's going to be quite a tight squeeze. So there wasn't enough for everybody, but they had to do something. Um, they've also tried to improve the warning systems as well for future flood events. Um, in terms of the longer term, it's a bit easier to kind of put in strategies for the longer term. What they've done is they've built seven dams throughout Bangladesh to try and hold back some of the water if there's a monsoon event and then they can just kind of let it out slowly rather than letting it all out in one as it is naturally. They've also done a lot of replanting of trees and forests up in Nepal where there'd been a lot of deforestation previously. Obviously that again is going to increase the amount of interception from the vegetation and it will start to reduce the lag time of the floods. Um, and then finally what they've done is they've started to divert some of the water off to storage tanks as well. And they've also built embankments. Oh,